Welcome to the third out of six lecture series, Iran. We're going to handle Iran in three parts, three lectures. The first lecture will cover Iran prior to the revolution in 1979. We'll look at an Iran that was a staunch ally of the United States of America, ruled by the Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. In the second lecture, we'll look at the revolution and one of its main architects and beneficiaries, the man in the right of the screen, the Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini. We'll talk about the revolution and the subsequent republic, Islamic Republic, that is, of Iran. Finally, in the third lecture, we'll continue looking at the Islamic Republic of Iran as it transitioned from the 1980s into a period of reform in the 1990s, a period of reform that culminated in the Islamic Republic of Iran aiding the United States of America in our campaign in Afghanistan in the fall of 2002 and the spring of 2003. Unfortunately, we did not reciprocate the goodwill and Mahmoud Ahmadinejad was elected in the summer of 2005. Speaking of Ahmadinejad, there's a presidential election campaign going on right now, the results of which might be known before this class is finished. But first things first, let's look at Iran prior to the Islamic Revolution. The story begins in 1908. The story begins in 1908 because that's when oil was discovered. The first time oil was discovered anywhere in the Middle East was here in Iran in 1908. Not discovered by Iranians, but rather discovered by the British. And it would be the British who would exploit this oil discovery by forming the Anglo-Persian Oil Company later named the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company, but it's the same thing. Now, don't let the name fool you. There was nothing Persian or Iranian about this company. It was run by the British for the benefit of the British. The Anglo-Iranian Oil Company actually still exists today. It's not called the AIOC anymore. You know it as British Petroleum. They have fun little commercials, and they're all friendly and all that. Well, in 1951, the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company's exclusive monopoly on Iranian oil came under threat when Mohammad Mossadegh was elected Prime Minister. See, Mohammad Mossadegh had the crazy idea that Iranian oil should benefit Iranians. He nationalized the AIOC holdings, returning them to native control, just as Gamal Abdel Nasser had nationalized the Suez Canal in Egypt, resting it from Anglo-French control. Well, this was dangerous. In the context of the Cold War, this was seen as a strategic threat. And so the AIOC called upon the recently created Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, and the CIA overthrew the democratically elected government of Mohammed Mossadegh in 1953. What followed was 25 years of Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, the Shah, Ruhollah Khomeini, representing the clerical resistance in the United States 
always in the background. What we're going to watch now is a documentary, uh, a series of documentary clips that I've assembled together to give us a kind of introduction to pre-revolution Iran, the relationship between Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, the Shah, Ruhollah Khomeini, the resistance, the opposition, and the United States of America. Let's go to the tape. 